a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Batman crossover movie. Hmm, well, yeah, yeah, I think that's something I might be slightly interested in. There's been a lot of wonderful mashup comics and figures lately, and now we've got a movie adaptation of the Batman slash TMNT comic. Though they changed the name to Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the movie, but them being at odds is hardly the main plot point of it. Like with a lot of crossovers, it seems, they do battle due to a misunderstanding before teaming up. And even though the movie is an adaptation of the comic, there really were a lot of changes made. One major difference being that the Ninja Turtles just drove over to Gotham from New York in the movie version, where it was a dimensional portal that brought them to Gotham in the comic. And the fact they are from a different dimension ends up being a major plot point in that version, which is missing from the movie. Gotham is bonkers, yo! I don't know, Gotham and New York are pretty much the same. In the comic, the mutagen within the Turtles is starting to go inert the longer they remain in Batman's dimension, so the Turtles and Splinter being able to get back home before they revert back into regular animals is a source of tension throughout the story here. I rather like both takes on the story, but I get the rationale behind some of the changes, and some of the things removed for the movie version just kind of helps streamline it a bit better for that format. There's also references to the comic continuity, which isn't in the movie, as it kind of feel more out of place there. Also, the Turtles and Batman don't really seem to be based on any specific version of these characters in the movie. You'll kind of see hints of various incarnations of both series throughout the movie, which is very different than the style of the comic. It also doesn't waste any time re-establishing who these characters are. As long as you at least somewhat know both franchises, everyone in here should seem pretty familiar. The Turtles probably most closely resemble their 2003 incarnations. The designs vary up quite a bit from that series, and there seems to be a splash of 2012 in there as well. I like the style of the characters for the most part. There were some times where it felt like maybe there could be a bit more detail, so it felt a little less flat. Also, I kind of wish Donatello's head was a little less perfect oval looking sometimes. The foot soldiers look pretty close to the 87 design, but these guys aren't robots, that's for sure. Where are your metahumans? You mean the turtles? Turtles. Yikes! Too far, Shredder! Just kidding, I love that he did that. And I just really love the tone of this movie overall. It's got some really dark moments where the villains kill like this, but it's balanced out with some more lighthearted and funny moments, not just trying to be ultra gritty all the time. For the most part, things felt serious when they needed to be, and just fun at other times. There's maybe a couple of times I wish Michelangelo wasn't being as jokey, particularly a point near the end where Donatello breaks one of his arms. I wish this had been a point where Michelangelo showed a more serious side. But other than that, he really did have a lot of funny moments that worked well. Do I have to kill everything myself? He's got a gun umbrella. A gun umbrella? Everybody run! There's a crazy guy in a bat suit who's trying to kill us. Oh, it's a talking toad! I know, right? Spooky stuff. This movie is kind of the perfect tone for I'd like to see in a TMNT series. They can be goofy without being too juvenile, and the villains can be a serious threat and actually be shown killing. I was surprised in a good way about how violent some of the moments in this cartoon were, and I was extra surprised how much more violent the movie was than its comic counterpart part at times because you'd kind of expect that in reverse. But it wasn't like blood was flying every blow. They broke the blood out at certain times to really highlight some moments quite effectively. And as badass as Shredder is in a lot of this movie, I kind of wish his voice was a bit gruffer. Stay out of my way. Next time I will not be so merciful. It's not horrible. I just wish he was a little more intimidating sounding. Well, he can never sound as intimidating as I, the most intimidating shredder of them all. Yes, you are the most intimidating of them all. You're just rude, you know that? 
Shredder is voiced by Andrew Kishino, who had previously voiced Fong in the 2012 series, so that's a bit of an upgrade. Eric Bauza voices Leonardo, and Darren Chris voices Raphael. These two had actually voiced these turtles one other time before the Batman crossover in the Turtles Take Time and Space web short. Also, Eric Bauza had done some voices in the 2012 series, including Tiger Claw. Baron Vaughn, who's Donatello in this, hasn't been in anything TMNT related before this, but you might recognize his voice as Tom Servo in the MST3K revival. Michelangelo is voiced by Kyle Mooney, who's another TMNT newcomer. But even though this is a pretty much new TMNT cast, they all provide a familiar tone for the Heroes in the Half Shell and make it easy to accept this turtle team. Let's just get these guys to the streets so the police can find them. <laughs> You could have killed them! Did you know there was a dumpster there? I might have. If it helps, the dumpster being or not being there really gives no guarantee they'd survive. Doesn't help. help! Troy Baker is both Batman and the Joker, and while he has provided the voices for these characters in other media before, this is the first time he's voiced the two of them in the same thing. This movie is actually the first time anyone has been both the Joker and Batman in the same thing. In anything official, anyway. Baker does a pretty spot-on Kevin Conroy Batman, which is something that immediately makes me like this Batman. Shredder may have ancient ninja moves, but I've still got a utility belt. Get off Robin. Now. <laughs> Troy Baker is also really good at doing a Mark Hamill-style Joker, so big props to him. You've got what you wanted, now pay up! <laughs> Rachel Bloom, who's Batgirl, hasn't voiced a Batman character before, but she was April O'Neil in Robot Chicken before. And Barbara Gordon in this not in her Batgirl outfit does have a striking resemblance to April O'Neil from the 2003 series. Yes, that insane connection must be the reason they cast her! Batgirl's actually in addition to the story the movie has made, as there's just a scientist who witnessed the Turtles fighting the Foot Clan at the beginning of the comic. I rather like her inclusion, though, as it adds another staple of the Batman team to the crossover. I've whipped up a retro mutagen. Anti-ooze. Not gonna call it that. Though we did cut a lot of the TMNT allies, as April, Casey, and Splinter were all involved on the comic side of things, where now only Splinter appears via a flashback. An encounter with Killer Croc has been subbed out for the Turtles battling the Penguin and his goons, which is for the better for the story flow, as Penguin is more involved with the actual plot, and Killer Croc just seemed to appear for no real reason. And by the way, I just really like how one of the Penguin's goons has an anti-Batman tattoo. I like to imagine that this guy was just really into Batman first and just got a bat symbol tattoo, but then he started working for the Penguin so he got altered and put a no symbol around it. Also, another one of Penguin's goons kind of looks like Krang's android body. Good stuff. Also, Raph crushes his face. More good stuff. So after Shredder executes the blabby foot soldier, instead of just taking off right away like he did originally, the movie gives us a one-on-one -on -one battle with Batman and Shredder, which is definitely a good matchup. It's not something I really thought about before, but putting Batman up against Shredder is something that actually works really well. Shredder even has to break out a kind of desperation super move just to end the battle for now. But as cool as this battle was, its addition kind of adds a bit of a logic hole unless you just really like overpowered Batman. Because right after this is when Batman has his confrontation with the Turtles. <laughs> What you think something like that costs? My soul, probably, since I'd pay that. Um, wild guess here, this might be his car. Whoever you are, you'd better back the hell away from my brothers! Batman is able to hold back the four turtles here, which makes a bit more sense when he's pretty fresh, like in the comic version, versus having just had a grueling battle with the Shredder. Me, your loyal henchman slash hostage? I'm not one. 100% certain on my status here. Baxter Stockman is a kind of fun addition to the movie adaptation. But I'm basically a hostage! Don't hit me! <laughs> you 
are a terrible disappointment. Though Baxter's inclusion does take away a rather badass Shredder moment where Shredder had implanted an explosive into a scientist he had forced to help him's head and explodes it after he had been rescued. Shredder teams up with Ra's al Ghul in both versions of the story, but in the comic it's an alliance made about halfway through the story, and here it's the whole reason Shredder is in Gotham. Shredder is supplying Ra's with ooze and a machine to spread it to throw Gotham into chaos. And in return, Ra's al Ghul will let Shredder use the Lazarus Pit so he can greatly extend his lifespan. They call him the Batman. Oh, Batman. Yeah, no, I'm glad that a half an hour of research pulled up the name I could have guessed in two seconds. Look, I love being an amphibian as much as the next guy. Amphibious, we're still reptiles. Yeah, thanks for that. Thank you for that. The turtles end up taking a sewer entrance into the Batcave and discover Batman's rather funny trophies, the giant penny and the T-Rex. Batman got his giant penny from the greatest villain ever, the Penny Plunderer. You'll be surprised to hear that the Penny Plunderer wasn't included in this crossover. And I just see the signs of a dude with way too much time and way too much money on his hands. This line here is actually part of a minor plot thread in the comic about how Raph thought Batman didn't really take all this as seriously as the Turtles and was just a spoiled rich kid who fought crime for fun. This ended up leading to a moment where Batman took Raph to the alley where his parents were gunned down to show him how much stopping criminals really meant to him. Which is a really good and cool story moment, but it is kind of funny when you just step back and look at the fact that Batman is showing Raphael where his parents died. In the cartoon, instead of Raph causing a momentary divide, it's more on Batman, as he doesn't think he can trust the Turtles in battle after they don't directly follow his orders and he's briefly mutated by the Joker into a literal Batman. Or Man-Bat! But that's a different Batman character, so no. The Turtles' battle against mutated Batman adds another fight between the two parties, which I guess justifies the Versus title a little more. But, of course, Batman wasn't in his right mind while he was mutated thanks to some Joker venom. Now, Joker's part in the story was expanded quite a bit in the cartoon, probably because Joker is, of course, viewed as Batman's main nemesis, so there's an extended battle with all of Batman's enemies mutated by the ooze at Arkham, led by the Joker. They gave me some of their wonderful ooze to play with, and in return, I gave them the formula for my Joker venom. The Arkham Asylum battles lead to some pretty cool moments, though sometimes I gotta say the mutated versions of some of these villains are a bit of a downgrade. However, a purposely downgraded Poisoned Ivy leads to a rather funny moment. Wait! She can't reach? So, walk around her? The Joker mentioning mixing the mutagen with his Joker venom gets just a passing mention in the comic by him, where in the cartoon it's one of the major plot points, as this mixture is what Shredder and Ra's al Ghul are planning to spread across Gotham City. Another moment of characters crossing paths which I thought worked particularly well was Commissioner Gordon meeting the Ninja Turtles. What are those? Teenagers. Mutants. Ninjas. Turtles. Just think about your retirement. I need you to... Sure, leave before I finish. That never gets old. It was great how this crossover had the characters kind of commenting on the absurdity of things within both of these series, like the turtles commenting on all the blimps flying around Gotham. Does New York have mad blimps flying around for no reason? I mean, like, what are they for? And there's a nice payoff to it later when Michelangelo and Donatello are saved during a fall by landing on one. There is no money. What? It's a trick! Kill him! Your men are all dead. Some other differences worth mentioning are the Penguin, after getting betrayed by Shredder, just exits the movie, where in the comic he ends up getting mutated along with the other Batman villains. And there's this Batman mech suit in the comic with the four turtles' colors on it, which gets half blown away almost immediately, so it's not really much of a loss that that wasn't in the movie. Also, since the turtles drove to Gotham in this version, they have the turtle van, and we get a nice side-by-side -side of it with the Batmobile. So you ride around in this thing on purpose? 
Okay, that's cool. I gotta say, this turtle van moment kind of reminds me of when the turtle van was in Turtles Forever, but here they found a way to poke fun at it and then actually give it redeeming qualities instead of just complaining that it's lame. I also like how they use the manhole cover shooter on it. Michelangelo, press some buttons. <gasps> I've always wanted to hit every button. There's a bunch of mutated henchmen the crossover team has to deal with, ranging from a silly pigeon, which might have been a reference to Pigeon Pete from the 2012 series, to a T-Rex somehow. I really kind of wonder what determined what people would turn into when they are exposed to mutagen within this crossover, but whatever, it was fun. Any last words? Cowabunga. What? Cowabunga? <laughs> The last battle with Roz and Shredder has a lot of fun moments and gets surprisingly brutal at times, which is great. This battle takes place at the chemical factory which made the Joker into what he is, and we get a post credit stinger of Joker Shredder. So if there's a sequel to this, I guess it'll be pretty different compared to the comic sequel. Also, there's another particular TMNT crossover comic I'd love to see an animated movie of. This movie really does a great job of mixing these two worlds in fun ways while also delivering one of the most violent versions of the Ninja Turtles in animated form. There is some real thought put into how to combine these two properties, and even though things get fairly serious in some ways, the story never makes the heroes miserable, which is unfortunately something that happens far too often these days. They just ended up making Batman and the Turtles play really well off each other. I highly recommend watching Batman vs. TMNT, and if you enjoy this crossover, I'd recommend reading the comic too. It offers quite a varied version of this story. <clears throat> excuse me, what? Joker? Shredder? I don't think so. Pass! The Batman TMNT crossover is a lot better than me crossing over a shredder in my apartment. Well, that was uncalled for! <laughs> Bunga!